Uh, okay, well, my job here is to present the coffins uh, that were discovered. This uh, cemetery uh, had a really sizable collection of wooden coffins. Mm, uh, my job uh, was uh, to study uh, about 45 coffins that uh, were taken out and um, uh, first uh, a few of them stored. The rest, uh, because I was in the mission at the time, I could study them uh, as they were excavated, um, uh, only the best uh, of these coffins, uh, about four or five of them, are still uh, in the storehouse in Naklun. The rest, uh, because they formed a certain standard, I guess, um, uh, uh, have not been stored um, for later. Uh, these 45 coffins that were studied, they make up, um, uh, they are a part of about 200 coffins that were uh, excavated. Uh, and that 200 uh, is about half of the burials uh, that um, at the time that I was studying them, which was 2010, before 2010, there were about 400 burials known. Uh, that shows you uh, that the percentage, the share of um, uh, burials that uh, uh, were made in some kind of coffin. Uh, when I say that, uh, I refer to what you see on this first slide. Mm, uh, uh, the materials used to make coffins in Naklun were either wood, which is uh, the most common version, or as you see on the lower part of this slide, uh, palm leaf uh, ribs, the jarids of Egypt, uh, even today they are uh, used to make uh, boxes uh, mainly for, for instance, vegetables in the market. In this case, uh, somebody went to the effort of making this very, very, very long box uh, to um, use as a coffin. Next slide, please. Uh, size. Naturally, uh, uh, this uh, mm, the size of the coffins uh, depends, of course, on the needs in this case. Uh, yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, on the needs in this case. Um, uh, the, of the 45 that I studied, uh, uh, we had three sizes. Uh, the regular size uh, for adult burials was uh, 180 to 190 uh, centimeters, uh, perhaps better to say a meter 80, a meter 90. But equally, we had uh, uh, coffins made to size, which is imp an important constatation, which means that uh, coffins were actually uh, um, custom tailored to the need at the time. Uh, there were a smaller, the smaller medium version, so to speak, was uh, for juvenile um, uh, skeletons um, as uh, um, identified by the anthropologists on site at the time. And those were like 130, 140 centimeters in length. And the smallest for children under uh, a meter long. There were a few of those as well. In this case, um, uh, an adult um, was buried uh, together with uh, a child, but in separate coffins uh, found side by side. Next slide, please. And um, one last thing at the... Uh, um, uh, uh, one last thing is that we had one coffin that was a jumbo size coffin. Uh, it measured 243 centimeters, but that was like completely unique. Uh, and uh, obviously, again, showing that they were custom tailor made uh, to the individual that was supposed to be buried in them. Uh, design, which is uh, uh, not quite as... Uh, uh, simple as one might think, a coffin is a coffin is a box, right? A box is a box is a box. But actually, the coffins in uh, Berenica take on two forms. One is just a regular box, a rectangular shape, but others were made trapezoidal to fit the body shape. Next size, uh, next slide, please. Mm. Uh, they were box-like. Uh, the lower slide, the lower picture in this slide shows that or uh, profile um, as the one on top uh, again shows. Uh, uh, this is again uh, um, connected to the fact that 
the trapezoidal uh, box like um, uh, sorry the trapezoidal profile coffins were uh, fitted to the body shape while the boxes were simply made as boxes. Uh, next slide, please. And in one case, yeah, and in one one case, uh, uh, somebody took a log and uh, mm, hollowed it out, just as you would hollow out a canoe, uh, and use that as a coffin. Completely unique. Next slide, please. The lids in this case, uh, in the case of these coffins, uh, could be either flat or gabled. Uh, naturally, again, uh, the gabled form belongs to the more exceptional uh, forms, uh, um, which could represent perhaps burials of status. Before we go on, just uh, take note of the design of the uh, uh, red lines marked on the gabled lid and generally on the uh, coffin on the left. This is 324 and it appeared in uh, the textiles presentation, uh, including some important textiles. Um, these red lines are a rendition of um, uh, ropes that were used to uh, wrap up these coffins. We will see some examples later. Uh, and they generally come from that uh, long Egyptian tradition, I would guess, the tradition of having uh, nets around the burials. Uh, next one, please. Uh, yeah. Um, when talking of flat lids, look at the variety that we have. Of course, one plank in the center, that's the norm. But equally uh, common were, plank, were lids made of whatever material you could find and just uh, knocked together, nailed together with these uh, uh, horizontal uh, sort of um, uh, crossbars uh, just to form a lid. And at the very top on the left, you can see uh, logs, simply logs mm, mm, put together uh, tied together, in fact, not nailed or any in any, uh, any other way, simply tied together and put on top of a burial, of a coffin, of a box, basically, um, uh, just to cover it up. On the left, the you have uh, that Jared coffin that you saw at the very beginning, a uh, very well-made uh, example of this kind of uh, uh, box. And below that, uh, another version, a normal re, um, trapezoidal coffin of planks uh, with uh, uh, legs, which we will see them in a minute. But see, the top, the lid is made actually of separate jarrets that are connected with palm rope very loosely, uh, as if uh, uh, it was enough just to have uh, uh, a, a closing of this kind um, uh, to mark that the burial has been completed. Next slide, please. Uh, two more examples of uh, what the lids could have looked like uh, when reusing uh, material. Uh, the point uh, of these um, is that perhaps the rectangular piece that you can see at either uh, in both cases at the end or uh, at one end of the coffin it was at the head end in both cases uh, so one has uh, one could think although there is no way of proving it at this point anyway one could think that uh, uh, at least at the moment of um, uh, uh, of the wake before the burial uh, perhaps it was possible to actually see the uh, um, body buried, uh, the body that was inside the coffin before it was actually closed for burial. And the first example of uh, a simple rope being tied all around the coffin. Uh, again, in this case, one uh, looks at that and thinks, okay, this is just for transportation, just for keeping the whole thing together as it doesn't look very sturdy. Mm, that may have been um, the practical side of this uh, operation, uh, uh, but let's go on and perhaps and you will see also a different way of doing uh, the wrappings around the um, the lids. Uh, 
the gabled uh, lids, as I said, belong to coffins of uh, 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 coffins uh, belonging to people of status, because these uh, the three coffins that we see here, they were found in a uh, in a sort of separate part of the uh, cemetery a mausoleum that was attached. Uh, to the eastern side of um, uh, the church on Com A in Clun, around which this uh, graveyard developed. In fact, you, uh, my personal opinion is that uh, the church at this point was the cemetery church uh, connected with this big cemetery that surrounds it. And in the end, when the church is already in ruins, it overruns uh, it with the poor burials of later times. But here we are at the very beginning. This is the very beginning of the uh, 12th century. We know that for sure because uh, uh, in one of these coffins, um, uh, uh, the male ba buried in this coffin was furnished with uh, that uh, Codex of St. John that we have from Naclun, which has a date in it written in, uh, um, uh, by hand added to the Codex at a later time. So we know the exact year when he was buried uh, next uh, to the eastern wall, outside the eastern uh, wall of the church. Uh, please take note of uh, the red lines that you can see on the sides of this coffin. Uh, these red lines in this case are part of that uh, idea of uh, wrapping the coffin with uh, a string, a rope um, uh, for, well, either practical or De decorational purposes. Since they are painted here, instead of being the actual ropes, I would think that uh, there is something in the uh, decorational idea. Uh, um, yeah, and I'll stop at that at this moment. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yes, next, next thing about uh, the coffin structure, coffin design. Um, the top photo shows you the simple coffin, right? Uh, a box that what we are accustomed to. But a whole series, uh, actually more than half of these uh, coffins had some kind of legs. And that is what the lower uh, photo um, uh, shows, that uh, the coffin had these uh, pieces of wood attached on the sides and a crossbar on the bottom, designed to well, yes, first thing, designed to lift the coffin off the ground so that it's not standing on the ground. And this has parallels even today. For instance, uh, if you find uh, somewhere on the internet, I once found a burial of an Athos, a monk from the monastery in Athos uh, in Greece. That's far away, but uh, that's what they had there. Uh, a, a kind of box uh, on legs that was used to carry the body to the cemetery. Uh, so the idea of this, um, some kind of, uh, well, let's call them leg supports, uh, uh, was common and used in Naklun. Uh, let's go on to see more. Next slide. Uh, more examples. Uh, this coffin with legs, uh, and you can see how the, uh, how the legs were attached at the, from the bottom side of the coffin. Uh, the crossbars and the uh, sidebars uh, do not uh, connect in any way. They are attached, uh, uh, nailed or pegged to the uh, planks, the, the, the body of the coffin, so to speak, um, designed simply to uh, achieve the effect of lifting the coffin from the ground when it, it, when it is left standing. Next. Uh, some uh, this drawing helps you understand also how how the more refined uh, supports uh, looked like. Uh, I've called them halter-like supports because that's what they look like—a halter uh, uh, put on two ends of the coffin to um, well, yes, to lift it off the ground. But in this case, for sure, the uh, the um, uh, side supports uh, extend so far up. Uh, that they were surely used for carrying the coffin. Uh, apart, so again, we have one uh, function to lift the coffin off the ground. The other function is to help um, uh, carry it, to uh, create handles for carrying it. And in fact, when we were working on these coffins, it was helpful also in moving them around. 
uh, uh, these photos show you uh, in more detail. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm sorry, I have this tendency. I'm talking here and I'm pointing to my laptop. Uh, you can't see the cursor. So um, yes, the one on the left, in the bottom left, uh, you can see the, um, uh, the uh, bottom bar is fitted into the side legs. Uh, on the right, uh, you have another example of uh, um, a, a sort of plank, which has two pegs sticking out uh, uh, from the bottom of it. That Those two pegs were fitted into the bottom of the coffin, and there were slits made in the sides, of, uh, in the side bars to uh, keep it together, and those were tied together. And in the center, a beautiful example of uh, uh, well-made, uh, not just branches or uh, mm, uh, secondary reused pieces of wood, well-made um, th these handles, the side handles fitted into a bottom bar that actually has this beautifully made hole in it. Uh, and of course, these were not uh, made specifically for the coffins. The many of these pieces are simply reused furniture that uh, the uh, coffin maker um, uh, scrounged from wherever he could. Uh, obviously, wooden furniture would uh, be made for the houses, and when it broke, it would be thrown out. So he would be taking pieces from uh, that uh, uh, waste. Mm, broken furniture and uh, using it very creatively in making these coffins. Uh, next, please. Uh, more examples of the mm, uh, uh, of what these side uh, mm, uh, side uh, bars, uh, handles, whatever looked like. Uh, the way they were connected, the pegging, the the uh, all kinds of. Uh, mm, mm, Creative ways of uh, getting the effect. Next, please. Uh, decoration. Not much on these coffins. Uh, quite expectedly, uh, the Coptic cross in ochre uh, paint, red paint uh, at the foot end, uh, at the head end on the top, uh, at the head end on the side. There are three or four examples. It's not like there are on all on all of the coffins. This is rather rare than common to have this, but it is the same kind of ochre paint that was used to make the rope patterns around the coffins. Next, please. And yes, the best examples uh, with, that I promised you, uh, coffins sometimes, not always, have coffin shrouds uh, placed on top of or completely around and these are uh, another form of textile that uh, Basha, uh, Barbara Chaya has also studied. Uh, they, uh, and I won't uh, give you the details because I sort of didn't look them up for this seminar, sorry. Uh, but um, uh, some of these um, had uh, crosses also painted on the textile. Some of these, one of these, sorry. One of these had crosses, red crosses painted um, on top of the textile, and in this case, there were several of these crosses. Next, please. <laughs> One case of an engraved uh, ornament, which appeared on the foot end of a coffin of a small child, one of those uh, coffins that were one meter long, uh, apparently a girl, uh, and, oops. Is there a problem? Bona? It doesn't, it doesn't it seem that uh, they got locked off. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, yeah, he is back, I think. Okay. She's back, yeah. I think we're back, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know where it dropped out, uh, where it, uh, yeah. where we lost the connection, but uh, this is a coffin of a small girl. 
uh, one of those that were just a meter long or thereabouts. And on the foot end, there is an engraving of what we believe is a scorpion. Uh, you might have a different idea. I'd be very interested to know. Uh, however, uh, a Scorpio is okay in this context because in the folk culture, it's uh, often um, meant to protect the, uh, the child from uh, such dangers. Uh, next to the scorpion, you see those four uh, little uh, um, sort of um, uh, hollows in the plank. And this shows you that the plank was reused. It must, must have been part of something else. Uh, before being used for the coffin. The, those holes are uh, the effects of uh, um, a nail, uh, having nails being uh, 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 used on this plank. Next one, please. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we're, we're on to quality. Uh, the quality, you've seen that uh, these uh, coffins uh, aren't of the finest quality. Uh, and the one on top is, uh, I'd say a regular one, uh, neither too bad nor too good, just the right version. Uh, however, we have one very good coffin that's from 322. It's um, bigger than the others. It's got a better cover, it's better made. Uh, uh, and it also has that cross at the end of, uh, that it's in the drawing right now because we'll see uh, pictures of it in a minute. Um, uh, you can see how uh, uh, regular it is, how neat the legs are. There are three legs in this case on e each of the sides. Um, there are no crossbars on top. Uh, and uh, uh, what's more, uh, it is made of a finer, thinner wood. It has, next slide please. It has all the um, makings of a really good, uh, cabinetry uh, workshop, uh, one that was well skilled in making furniture. All the elements of this coffin seem like they were made by someone who uh, was normally making uh, furniture. Uh, 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 see how well made uh, the uh, niches for the top bar, for, for, the, for, for the bar that was inside the lid to fit the top of the, the lid, to fit the top of the coffin. Uh, see how well the legs uh, are turned and cut flat at the bottom. Uh, see the uh, red line that uh, connects all the nails uh, which were put uh, um, to, uh, uh, from, once, from the inside of the coffin to the outside to hold the legs. Uh, somebody took really great care to uh, prepare this coffin and it is also much larger not in terms of length or width, but in terms of height, uh, which could mean that it was intended for a very big person. Uh, and um, I say this with a smile for a big person who may be big sideways, not just in height. Uh, next, uh, see the insides, uh, the corners, how well they are uh, um, the, the corners of the coffin inside have these quarter um, uh, 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 beams uh, placed uh, and nailed to from outside so that uh, it is stronger, this box. At the same time, uh, you can see that the bottom, uh, which was out of sight, is uh, put together from pieces. Uh, it There was not enough of the plank and they had to uh, uh, sort of stitch it with something else to complete the length that was needed. Next one, please. Uh, so that was the good example, the finest that we had. And now some of the worst cases that we had. Uh, here, for instance, the plank on top wasn't useful as a lid. They had to put these triangular pieces and they actually nailed them with a crossbar so that they wouldn't fall off and a branch was added at the end, at the other end to fill that hole and not even fill it completely. The head end was made of half logs. Obviously something that, uh, it, okay, I'd say this, that this is not a workshop coffin, <laughs> not in any way a workshop coffin. This is something that uh, people made uh, 
at home for somebody who died uh, out of the material that they had lying around the house. Next one. Uh, more examples of uh, mm, uh, homemade <laughs> coffins. Next one, please. Uh, homemade lids, again, uh, the variety of material, whatever was found around somewhere around in the village uh, was used uh, to make these coffins. Next one, please. Uh, last uh, element, actually, this is not uh, 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 on second thoughts, I wouldn't put it in quality right now. Uh, this would be design. Uh, the coffins, uh, uh, regardless of whether the best or the worst, they were put together with either wooden pegs. And here are some examples of the wooden pegs that could, were taken out of the coffins. Examples of how they were fitted into the sides of the beams in order, uh, like the photo at top right, uh, to uh, fit it there to hold the, next, the, the lid onto the, uh, attached to the coffin or at top left, on the other hand, you see uh, the peg actually between two planks and there's even a red line, you know, somebody marked it so that the two would fit together. Uh, on at bottom, bottom right, on the other hand, if you look carefully uh, uh, in the front next to the measuring tape in that area, you can see two crossing pegs. They belong to the next plank that has been lost, but the pegs were there and you can see how the structure of the bottom of the coffin looked like. Uh, you can also see, uh, based on this photo, uh, um, why uh, not all of these coffins were preserved. Uh, most of the time, uh, as the rule is in Naklun, when excavating um, these uh, burials, uh, the first thing after a burial is found is and the lid is taken off, the first thing uh, the textile expert comes along and uh, looks at all the textiles. Only then the physical anthropologist uh, looks at the bones and at the very end, uh, am I <laughs> uh, coming in and um, uh, uh, studying the coffin often just as in this case um, in situ because there is no way of uh, taking lifting it out of there in one piece. Uh, that, those are the vicissitudes of uh, preservation. Next one, please. When not pegged, the uh, coffins were nailed together. Uh, the nails often were uh, mm, uh, placed in this. This is the, by the way, that jumbo coffin that I told you about, uh, that was 243 centimeters long uh, uh, and completely disintegrated, as you can see here, uh, just remains of uh, the wood around the uh, nails, which is very helpful in this sense, iron corrosion, because the wood tends to corrode to the nail. And uh, thanks to that, it is possible, as you see in the bottom right photo, uh, it is possible to measure the width of the planks, uh, because the, you can see them on, um, uh, on, on, the, on the corrosion uh, on the nails. Uh, next one, please. Uh, the nails also are in two, two, at least two versions of nails are used. Um, uh, at bottom right and at top left, you see the just the regular nails with small heads that are used to put things together. Uh, but there are also nails with these very big heads, two centimeters um, uh, uh, in, well, they're not exactly circular, but uh, uh, you, you can use uh, diameter as a um, uh, dimension for them. Uh, they are two centimeters wide and they look like they were intended to be decorational. Uh, uh, right now you're looking at rusted nails, so obviously they don't look nice, but uh, uh, um, a new uh, iron nail with such a big head uh, would have actually had its aesthetic uh, uh, qualities. Uh, and the, the last slide, mm, the last slide is just another look at all the different, uh, 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 the, 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 all the different evidence that I found showing that uh, the uh, planks uh, uh, were reused from uh, other um, uses. 
uh, or mm, uh, uh, that, 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 that is one possibility. The other possibility is that uh, planks were being taken from a workshop that was actually making good uh, wooden uh, furniture and there were leftovers, uh, uh, wooden leftovers that uh, simply didn't, uh, couldn't be used anymore for anything good, so to speak, anything that could be sold. And so this uh, material uh, was left aside to be used for the coffins, which did not need to be so nice. You can see the, li the, the lines which do not mean anything for the coffin on the top, left, top right photo. Those lines coming down, they have nothing to do with coffin structure. They are the remains of lines that were used to cut uh, the planks. And this is what was left over. The same thing is with these grooves in the bottom left photo. These grooves have nothing to do with the coffin. They are part of what was left over after completing the cutting of regular planks. Uh, at top right, you see the circle around that hole that shows that there was a nail there deeply embedded in the uh, wood, in, in the object that uh, the wood was part of before it became a coffin. So uh, uh, from this uh, survey of the coffin studied, uh, uh, you have an idea now of the variety uh, that appeared and of the different status of the people buried in these coffins, uh, obviously from the lowest and poorest. And they, uh, because they have coffins, so they're not the poorest <laughs> in Anaklun, to those that were really uh, the highest uh, elite of, uh, in, in this population. So thank you for that. <laughs>